Section 9 is prolonged labor. Some labors go on and on and on. So what do you do? If there's no possibility of transport, what do you do? What did birth attendants do before the days of cesareans? Section 9 will give you some advice as to what to do in these cases. So let's find out what to do. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about prolonged labor. We have um, internationally, okay, some uh, problems with uh, obstetrical fistulas, okay, especially in women in Africa. And I want to talk to you just a little bit about this. I really recommend the best-selling book, Half the Sky. Um, Half the Sky, if you haven't read that book, it'll be a, a real eye-opener for you. Women in Africa and in the, um, not only Africa, but in the southeastern Asia area have a real problem with fistulas, and that is that um, a fistula is a hole between the, um, well, it can be between the bladder and the vagina. It can be f from the rectum to the vagina. It can be from the urethra to the vagina. And because there is a hole there, the women constantly leak urine and they, or feces, whatever they happen to have. Uh, they might have multiple uh, kinds of fistulas, okay? And because of that, and this is a result of childbirth in their area, because of that, they are outcasts. Their husbands divorce them, send them home to the mother or cast them out, or they live in little huts behind the house, and it really is a very serious problem. Um, a lot of the world agencies are getting together to help correct this and cut this down. But uh, they, uh, do you know what I mean? It, there's just so many that have a problem. There was a study in Nigeria and they found that the typical fist fistula patient was small, under 97 pounds, okay, short, under four feet nine inches, had been married young, 15 and a half years old is the average, was now divorced or separated, lived in rural, rural area, was uneducated, developed the fistula during her first labor, which lasted at least two days and bore a stillborn fetus in her first labor. Okay. Now, what happens is that cephalopelvic disproportion, and we hear this a lot. Well, you got a C-section because the baby was just too big to get through your pelvis. But in this case, okay, in the African and the, the women, it is because the women are really small. Most of them are probably a little malnourished, okay? They're, they're thin. They're uh, young, in other words, they're getting, they're marrying their children off at 11, okay? And um, their pelvises are not mature, okay? They haven't grown enough. Um, and so it is um, a real problem. And this obstructive labor is what they, they get. Um, can uh, go on and on for days. In the rural areas, the women do not have permission from their husbands a lot of times to transport into a hospital or a, a care facility that has um, some, something adequate to help them. Uh, they wait too long. They don't have any, any transportation to get there. And if they do go, they have to wait for a long time to get service. And it is kind of culturally in that area uh, expected that women are gonna have problems and uh, babies are gonna die because of labor. And I think that the death rate, maternal death rate in that area is like 
a hundred times more than it is in the United States. But a lot of to do is made about this and there's a lot of publicity and the WHO, uh, World Health Organization and all sorts of organizations are working to help correct this. And so we can get the attitude that prolonged labor is, is always gonna have a bad outcome and that's not really true in our society. Because number one, we are going to be working with women who have mature pelvises, okay? And genetically, uh, a lot of African women have real narrow pelvises, okay? More of the women in our society are gonna have a female pelvis <coughs> and uh, be able to handle uh, prolonged labor. We have a little bit more padding on us. <laughs> than some of those women. And, you know, if we have an adipose, a fat layer on us, it goes all through the female organs, okay? You're going to have a fat pad down in through the vaginal area, etc. But they don't have any excess padding on them. So, uh, you know, a couple day labor is, is going to be pretty hard on them. <laughs>